morning. Can you guys hear me here? Thank you for having me. It's an honor to be here. My name is uh, Tanner Ferguson. I'm a fourth year medical student from the University of South Dakota. And please note that I've slightly modified my title to off-label uses of the trabecular uh, micro bypass stent and glaucoma because I feel like it's a better descriptor of what I'm going to present today. I do not personally have any financial disclosures, but please note that Dr. Birdall is a speaker and consultant for Glaucos. So the purpose or goal of today's presentation is to present some research we've done that's evaluated various uses of the eye stent in glaucoma patients, and more specifically, some three off-label uses. So the first thing we'll talk about is the eye stent as a sole procedure in pseudophagic primary open angle glaucoma eyes, one stent plus cataract and pseudoexfoliation glaucoma, and the eye stent plus cataract and severe primary open angle glaucoma. And just a quick review of the eye stent, it's a tiny L-shaped stent that serves as a patent bypass through the trabecular meshwork to the Schlem's canal. And it was approved initially by the FDA in 2012, and its indication is for use in mild to moderate primary open angle glaucoma with cataract surgery. And in this population, the safety and efficacy has been well established. And it's an attractive option for surgeons because it preserves the conjunctiva and leaves open the option for more aggressive or um, future surgery down the road. These are just our general methods. Um, I will make note where there are differences in each of the uh, papers. So we did a, re a retrospective case series. We did not utilize any strict um, inclusion criteria such as IOP greater than 18 at baseline or patients had to be on two plus medications. Um, data was collected at um, baseline, typically one to two weeks before the procedure. And then we also collected data from the following time points, one day, one week, one month, all the way out to 24 months and in to 36 months in some of the uh, papers. And all procedures were performed by um, one surgeon, Dr. Birdall. The primary outcome measures we looked at were intraocular pressure, number of medications, and visual acuity. Um, I should note that for a number of medications, combination meds such as COSOPT or COMAGAN were reported as two meds. Um, the, to establish a safety profile, we looked at um, the incidence of IOP spikes greater than 15 at a, any time point after surgery. We also noted any complications, and we also looked at the need for um, additional or secondary surgeries. Dr. Birdall's surgical approach is fairly standard. He does not use myocol or myostat. He uses a cohesive viscoelastic. Um, they received a trimoxy injection concurrent with the procedure and then were on topical NSAIDs for one month. And glaucoma meds were removed at or after one week if the IOP was um, deemed acceptable by the clinician. And then post-operative medical therapy was escalated if um, there was visual field changes or nerve fiber loss on OCT, or the clinician had judgment that the IOP would cause um, either of these parameters to progress. So the first study we, um, I'll talk about is the eye stent as a sole procedure in pseudophagic guys with open angle glaucoma. This was initially presented at the 2014 ASCRS and was published in Journal of Glaucoma last year. Um, it included 60 pseudophagic eyes. The mean age was around 80. Um, 36 female, 24 male, and 51 out of 60 eyes were moderate to, to severe uh, primary opening of glaucoma. The safety profile in this um, study, 10% of eyes experienced an IOP spike greater than 15, um, with most of these occurring within the first week after surgery. Um, we did not note any intraoperative uh, or postoperative complications. And six eyes did go on to have secondary surgery. Three were treated with Ahmed tube shunt and three with um, KDB goniotomy. But all, all these secondary surgeries occurred more than two years after the initial procedure. So this graph uh, illustrates the mean intraocular pressure and medications at each time point. On the far left, you'll notice um, is the y-axis for intraocular pressure. On the far right is number of medications. So at baseline, the mean IOP was 20.32, and mean number of medications was 2.19. At 12 months, the mean IOP was um, reduced by greater than four millimeters of mercury, and this reduction was sustained uh, two years after surgery, and we noticed a similar trend uh, with medication use. 
So in this uh, paper, we saw a sustained IOP reduction of 5.38 at 24 months, um, de decreased dependence on drops with a 25% reduction at 24 months. Um, we did not note any uh, intraoperative complications, and six eyes did go on to um, require secondary procedures. Six eyes excluded from that graph. Yes. So, actually, since they were included um, up until the secondary procedure occurred, so in this case, they all were still included because um, the secondary procedures occurred more than two years after surgery. Uh, so, the next paper I'll talk about is the stent with cataract surgery and pseudo exfoliation glaucoma. Um, this was published in the June uh, JCRS this year. It included 115 eyes with mild to severe pseudoexfoliation implanted with one stent during cataract surgery. I was primarily female, and the average age um, was 77.42. The safety profile on this uh, paper, no significant adverse events. The IOP spike um, was low with only 6% um, experience an IOP spike greater than 15. And once again, um, almost all of these occurred within the first week after surgery. And one patient did go on to um, require or undergo secondary surgery, which was a KDV goniotomy plus ECP um, three years after surgery. So here is that graph again, the mean IOP and medication use at each time point. At baseline, the mean IOP is 20 and meds are 1.41. Um, two years after surgery, the mean IOP was reduced by more than five and a half or approximately five and a half and medications were reduced by 50%. And this graph, um, I included it for this paper. It, it, was, it um, shows the post-operative IOP reduction based on pre-operative IOP. So to the far left, that's the mean IOP reduction based on their last collected follow-up. And then so you'll note at, with patients with pre-operative IOP 16 to 18, the mean IOP reduction at their last follow-up was 3.56. In patients with pre-operative IOP 22 to 24, the IOP reduction was more than double what was seen in 16 to 18. And this um, graded IOP response is similar to what has been shown with FACO as well. So to conclude, in this um, population, we saw an IOP reduction of 5.49 at two years post-op. Medications were reduced by 50%, and higher preoperative IOPs were assorted with a greater uh, IOP reduction. For example, in um, patients with IOPs of 22 to 24 at baseline, the mean IOP reduction was 7.63, and in this population, we had an excellent safety profile. Only one eye went on to um, undergo secondary surgery, and there was a low rate of um, IOP spikes. So the last um, paper I'll talk about is the eye stent with cataract surgery and severe primary open angle glaucoma. This included 97 eyes with severe primary open angle glaucoma. Um, stage, stage of disease was defined as optic nerve changes consistent with glaucoma and visual field changes that, uh, and this crit criteria was consistent with the AAO preferred practice pattern guidelines. Um, it was a pretty even split for gender, 47 female and 50 male, and the average age was 74.76. Uh, for safety profile, we did not note any intraoperative or postoperative complications. Uh, seven eyes did experience IOP spikes which all occurred within the first week after surgery. And six eyes did go on to um, undergo secondary surgery. One was three months after surgery and the rest all occurred um, more than two years after surgery. So once again, this is the mean IOP and number of medications at each time point at baseline. <coughs> um, patients were on two meds and the mean IOP was 19.67. At 12 months, the IOP was reduced to 14.13 and uh, medications were reduced to 1.23, or like a 40% reduction. And this re reduction was sustained out to uh, two years after surgery. And for this um, paper, we did a three-year um, consistent cohort for eyes that had 36-month uh, data available to statistically um, compare them. So you'll note that um, at three years after surgery, the IOP reduction was sustained with more than um, a four millimeter reduction in pressure. So to conclude, in this paper, we saw sustained IOP reduction to 36 months, a 31% reduction in medication use at 24 months, 
Um, in this paper, 90% 90, 90 of eyes that had preoperative IOP greater than 19 or 19 or greater had a uh, pressure reduction at their last collected follow-up. And six eyes did go on to uh, require additional surgery and there was a low rate of IOP spikes. So to conclude, the eye stent has been well established to be safe and effective in patients with prime, uh, mild to moderate primary open angle glaucoma in combination with uh, cataract surgery. And these studies suggest that it's also a safe and effective option for patients with pseudoexfoliation glaucoma and severe primary open angle glaucoma and as a sole procedure in pseudophagic guys. Thank you. Any questions? Dr. Chaya. I think it's, it's my understanding that it was a case-by-case -case basis, so in some cases they were able to get them approved. I think more so early on, especially in the pseudophagic guys. Um, but I can ask that and get back to you for that. that uh, and then in terms of this technique, did you do anything specific during the drop, or was it just what was he doing? It's just going to be, you know, he doesn't do any targeting techniques, like try and target blanching vessels or anything like that. It's interesting to see the response with the exfoliation patients with the combination of the stent and, and cataract surgery. What would be interesting is to see if you have a cohort of patients who just had cataract surgery but were otherwise similarly matched to try to tease out what, what the effect of the cataract surgery itself was compared to the cataract surgery and the stent. And that would be interesting if you've got the data to do that to compare those two. Yeah. Um we don't have any, I don't have any data for just cataract surgery and pseudoexfoliation glaucoma. I'm sure I could retrieve it. Um, we do have some data with just um, pseudophagic guys with pseudoexfoliation glaucoma that were treated with a nice stent. So that could be a way of um, seeing the responses for just the stent. Any other questions? Thank you.